Here are the top stories for today, May 12, 2021. A magnitude 5.8 earthquake jolts parts of Luzon and Metro Manila, the country seismology agency says aftershocks are expected from the tremor. Boosting vaccination, the government aims to complete the inoculation of 25 million most vulnerable individuals by September as it hopes to have a better Christmas this year. No change in stance, the Foreign Affairs Department reiterates that the Julian Felipe Reef is within the country's exclusive economic zone. And artists and cops in Pangasinan join forces to provide aid to the needy. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story tonight, a magnitude 5.8 earthquake shook parts of Metro Manila and nearby areas this morning. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOC, said the tremor's epicenter was traced 11 kilometers northeast of Abra de Ilog in Occidental Mindoro. It had a depth of 110 kilometers. Intensity 5 was recorded in Calatagan, Batangas, while Intensity 4 was recorded in Puerto Galera in Oriental Mindoro. The earthquake was also felt at Intensity 3 in Muntinlupa City, parts of Cavite, San Jose Occidental Mindoro, and Calapan City in Oriental Mindoro. It also jolted parts of Central Luzon, Quezon Province, and some cities in Metro Manila. Fivok said aftershocks from the earthquake are possible, but damage is not expected. Filipinos may be celebrating a better Christmas this year as the country welcomes the arrival of more government-procured COVID-19 vaccines. The country has now four brands of COVID-19 vaccines in its inventory after the first batch of 193,050 doses of Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines arrived Monday night. Other brands include Coronavac from China Sinovac Biotech, AstraZeneca from a British-Swedish manufacturing company, Sputnik V from Russia's Gamaleya Research Institute, and Pfizer from the United States. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the government expects to have a total of 11,364,000 doses of different COVID-19 vaccine brands in its inventory within the month. With the arrival of more COVID-19 vaccines, Roque expressed hope that Filipinos would be able to spend this year's Christmas with their families and friends. Sa awan ng Diyos at ang patuloy na pagpapatupad ng ating COVID-19 plan, harinawa ay magiging masaya ang ating Pasko kung saan makakasama natin ang ating pamilya at mahal sa buhay. The government is targeting to complete the inoculation of up to 25 million most vulnerable individuals by September. These are the healthcare workers, senior citizens, and persons with comorbidities. Vaccines are Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said they are already doing the strategy to finish the inoculation for these groups followed by 58 to 70 million Filipinos by November and eventually reach 110 million Filipinos including children by the second quarter of 2022. Galvez said the A4 or other frontliners in essential sectors and A5 or those in the indigent priority list will be vaccinated starting June. The government has so far deployed 4,009,880 doses of COVID-19 jabs to 3,410 active hubs nationwide. A total of 2,409,235 have been vaccinated, of which 1,881,834 are health workers, 436,100 senior citizens, and 331,150 persons with comorbidities. The data also includes 8,881 economic frontliners who have been inoculated during the government's May 1 Labor Day tribute and some who are already on their second doses. 
All the two million doses of AstraZeneca vaccines that arrived on May 8 will be administered as first dose. The health department earlier resumed the use of AstraZeneca vaccine for all age groups after the Food and Drug Administration or FDA concluded that the jab has no known risk factors and that the benefits of receiving the vaccine still outweigh its risks. Most of the jabs will be given to the frontline health workers, elderly, and persons with comorbidity. The DOH assures that those who receive the first dose will complete their vaccination. Lalo na po sa mga ating mga LGU, kasi po paspas po ang uh, pagbibigay natin ngayon ng uh, AstraZeneca dahil nga po sa expiration. Pero nonetheless, what's important is you are protected. The Department of Health denied allegations that it had purchased 1 billion pesos worth of remdesivir. This after Buhay Party List Representative Lito Atienza earlier questioned the agency's request for budget to import the antiviral drug. In a statement, the DOH said that to be able to procure these investigational drugs, a certificate of product registration or an emergency use authorization or EUA is needed. As such, the procurement could not proceed as none of the investigational drugs have been granted these requisite regulatory approvals during the time of procurement. It also maintains that the continued use of remdesivir for COVID-19 patients is fully supported by a consensus panel of 19 medical societies as reflected in the Philippine COVID-19 Living Recommendations. The World Health Organization reports that COVID-19 cases worldwide are declining. However, there is a huge disparity when it comes to access to vaccines. WHO Director General Tedros Ghebreyesu said that while COVID-19 cases and deaths are falling in most regions, including the worst affected Americas and Europe areas, there is a shocking global disparity in vaccine access. This, he said, is one of the biggest risks to ending the pandemic as there are more than 5.4 million reported cases and almost 90,000 deaths last week. He said cases and deaths are still increasing rapidly in the Southeast Asia region, particularly in India. He said high and upper middle income countries have received 83% of the world's vaccines, while low and lower middle income countries have received just 17% of the world's vaccines. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the latest global COVID-19 figures. Still to come, over 127,000 AstraZeneca shots arrive in Iloilo. And the government raises the minimum access volume for pork imports to ease supply woes. Details ahead, this is the PNA Newsroom. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paikot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito.
Authorities have found out the resort in Caloocan that was shut down for operating while Metro Manila is still under modified enhanced community quarantine was not accredited for tourism. A police official was also sacked for failing to prevent the mass gathering of resort guests. Chris Crismundo has the story. The Department of Tourism confirmed that Gubat Sa Ciudad, a resort in Caloocan that was shut down for accepting guests while Metro Manila is still under modified enhanced community quarantine, has no DOT accreditation. The airing resort went viral after photos of people swarming in their pools circulated online. Under MECQ, the operation of swimming pools and tourist attractions are prohibited. The department stresses the importance of transacting with DOT-accredited establishments to ensure minimum standards for the operation of tourism facilities and services. It lauded a swift and resolute action taken by the city government of Caloocan against Gubat Sa Ciudad and commended Caloocan City Mayor Oscar Malapitan for ordering the closure and revocation of the establishment's business permit. Meanwhile, the commander of the Caloocan City Police Community Precinct 9 has been relieved from his post over the mass gathering at Gubad Sa Ciudad despite the prevailing MECQ. Caloocan City Police Chief Colonel Samuel Mina said, Lieutenant Ronald Battaglia replaced Lieutenant Colonel Harold Aaron Melgar as the city's PCP-9 commander effective Tuesday. He said the city government is set to file charges against the owner of the Gubat Sa Ciudad Resort. The city's health office has already filed administrative charges against Barangay 171 Chairperson Romeo Rivera over the incident. For his part, Interior Secretary Eduardo Año said the Caloocan City government is now in the process of contact tracing and testing of the resort's guests. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. The Muslim community in Cebu City vows to follow strict health protocols as they celebrate Idil Fitir on Thursday. More on this in today's Provincial Roundup from Marita Mawai. To prevent further spread of COVID-19, Muslim in Cebu City will celebrate Idil Fitir or the Festival of Breaking the Fast on Thursday in different locations instead of a centralized gathering. The Office of the Muslim Affairs and Indigenous Cultural Communities scrapped its plan to hold a centralized prayer at the Cebu City Sports Center to avoid gathering of a huge crowd of Muslim worshippers. Because of the ongoing COVID-19 threat, Muslim leaders agreed to spread out the celebration in different mosques in the city. The OMAICC also met with the Emergency Operations Center, Cebu City Police Office, and the Interagency Task Force to discuss health and safety protocols during the celebration. Meanwhile, an additional 127,200 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines arrived in Iloilo on Tuesday. The Department of Health Western Visaya Center for Health Development said that with more vaccine supplies coming in, there is also an increase in the interest of the public to avail of inoculation. As of May 9, the grand total for the master listed priority group A in Western Visayas already reached 1.2 million. In other news, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte assured the city has enough resources for the free swab testing for the Bawenos for COVID-19. Mayor Sara said active case finding and surveillance will continue noting that the existing free COVID-19 testing has benefited more the Bawenos. The mayor instructed district health offices to activate their respective swabbing corners to test more the Bawenos in the city's intensified campaign against COVID-19. Meanwhile, at least 1,300 drivers of public utility vehicles in the Caraga region will receive a total of 34 million pesos incentives from the government to ease the impact of COVID-19. Circular number 2021-030 sets for additional incentives for PUV drivers who participate under the service contracting program of the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board. Each of the driver beneficiaries is entitled to receive 25,000 pesos. 
As of Monday, a total of 318 drivers have already received their incentives. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Moahe. About 900 Phil ID cards are on their way for delivery to various parts of the country according to the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA. The deliveries represent the first batch of Phil ID that will be handed over to individuals who have completed Step 1 and 2 registration for the Philippine Identification System. PSA National Statistician and Civil Registrar General Dennis Mapa said, Phil Post picked up on May 1st the first batch of Phil ID cards printed by Banco Central ng Pilipinas for delivery this week. The ID cards are placed in an envelope with a letter that contains the PhilSys number and the PhilSys card number. PSA advises Phil ID holders to safe keep the letter and use the PCN found in the ID during transactions. President Rodrigo Duterte has raised the minimum access volume or MAV for pork imports amid the shortage of supply caused by the spread of the African swine fever in the country. Executive Order No. 133 raises the MAV of pork meat for 2021 of 54,210 metric tons by an additional 200,000 metric tons. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque said the EO is meant to serve as a compromise between the executive and legislative departments. Last month, senators asked Duterte to revoke EO 128 that reduces the tariff on pork importation over concerns that lower tariffs might kill the local hog industry. Duterte said he is willing to withdraw his executive order as soon as there is an improvement in the country's domestic supply. The country is currently under a state of calamity for one year due to the ASF outbreak pursuant to Duterte's Proclamation 1143, which he signed on Monday. Malacanang expressed optimism that the Philippine economy would recover from the slump induced by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Philippine Statistics Authority reported that the country's gross domestic product contracted by 4.2% in the first quarter of 2021. This compared to an 8.3% decline in the fourth quarter of 2020 that led to the negative 9.5% growth last year. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said, while the palace is saddened by the first quarter GDP outturn, it is still expecting an economic rebound in the next quarters. Roque cited the government's Ingat Buhay Para Sa Hanap Buhay campaign to improve economic growth by protecting livelihood. He said rebounding back to positive growth territory is achievable with the cooperation of the public. In a separate virtual presser, Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua said the country still has eight months to recover despite losses brought by the imposition of strict quarantine measures in the country. Up next, the DFA stands firm on its position that the Julian Felipe Reef is part of the country's territory. And cops and artists and Pangasinan team up for a good cause. Back after a quick break, stay with the PNA Newsroom. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. O galiin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito.
You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. The Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, said its position on the Julian Felipe Reef issue remains unchanged as it maintains that the reef is within the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone. Last month, the government informed Chinese Ambassador to Manila, Huang Xilian, that the Julian Felipe Reef lies within the EEZ of the Philippines and that the continuing presence of Chinese vessels in the area is a source of regional tension. In a separate tweet, Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. said, When it comes to foreign affairs, the DFA always has the last word. Meanwhile, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said, The Philippine government has never abandoned the country's claim over the Julian Felipe Reef. Roque belied a news report claiming to quote him that the Philippines does not own Julian Felipe Reef. Earlier, Loxin questioned the reason behind the pulling out of the Philippine ship in Scarborough Shoal during a standoff with China in 2012. He said the Philippine side withdrew even if it was the Chinese ships that were intruding in the country's exclusive economic zone. He added that the Chinese side had no intention of attacking based on his previous conversation with Chinese Foreign Minister and State Councilor Wang Yi. When the Philippines pulled out its ship, Loxin said Washington had no obligation to go to war because the Mutual Defense Treaty can only be triggered with an attack against a Filipino public vessel. Malacanang sees no conflict of interest in the designation of Presidential Communications Operations Office under Secretary Joe C. Egko as one of the eight spokespersons of the government's anti-insurgency body. Egko, who is also Executive Director of the Presidential Task Force on Media Security, is the spokesperson for mass media engagements and fact-checker of the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, or NTFLK. Some sectors express concern over EGCO's new role amid the task force's reputation for alleged red-tagging of journalists. But presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said EGCO's other roles require him to ensure the safety of all media workers. Roque said based on a study by the Center for Media, Freedom and Responsibility, most media killings can be traced to local politics and not red tagging. He said that legal remedies are available for journalists that have been red tagged. He also said NTF LCAC needed eight spokespersons because they could not speak for the task force on a full-time basis. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is set to deploy military personnel under detailed service to the Philippine Sports Commission in preparation for the Tokyo Olympics and the 31st Southeast Asian Games. A total of 117 national athletes and coaches from 22 sports are enlisted military personnel. 58 of them are under the Philippine Air Force, 19 from the Army, and 40 are serving the Navy. PSC Chairman William Ramirez highlighted the importance of enlisted national team members complying with the agreement between the PSC, the AFP, Philippine Olympic Committee, and the Philippine Paralympic Committee. He emphasized that the PSC takes responsibility for their detailed service. The PSC, POC, PPC and the AFP will have a formal signing of the Memorandum of Agreement covering the management, development, and training of soldier athletes on May 20. Film artists in Pangasinan have teamed up with the local police and various volunteers to provide food and services to communities in Dingayen. The Home Court Artistry Production, or HCA, a local film production team launched Bayanihan sa Barangay through a series of charity events to help provide the basic needs of the community in the spirit of Bayanihan. The project was inspired by the Barangayanihan of the Pangasinan Police Provincial Office. Aside from a community pantry, the project provides a feeding station, free blood pressure check, and eyeglasses for the senior citizens, among others. They also have a Sugud Bahay Bayanihan for persons with disabilities, where they bring the relief packs to their houses. The HCA plans to replicate the project in San Fabian Town.
And here's another look at today's biggest stories. A magnitude 5.8 earthquake jolts parts of Luzon and Metro Manila, the country seismology agency says aftershocks are expected from the tremor. Boosting vaccination, the government aims to complete the inoculation of 25 million most vulnerable individuals by September as it hopes to have a better Christmas this year. No change in stance, the Foreign Affairs Department reiterates that the Julian Felipe Reef is within the country's exclusive economic zone. And artists and cops in Pangasinan join forces to provide aid to the needy. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day. Stay safe, everyone.